Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Colin Taylor. I always like to start out by saying who I am. My name is Colin Taylor. I'm the pastor. I'm going to straighten this up a little bit. There we go. I'm the pastor at Grace United Methodist Church. Uh, if you're not familiar with us, probably you are because you're, you're uh, watching on Grace's Facebook uh, live stream. But even if you're not, you're picking us up somewhere else. Uh, Grace United Methodist Church is a, is a, a congregation, the United Methodist congregation. Really, really close to downtown Houston in Houston, Texas. And um, each week, we're, we're currently not meeting uh, in person for worship. We have online worship, and I hope that you can join us uh, Sundays at 1045 for uh, online worship. Uh, we have a pretty good worship service that we put together every Sunday. But we also do this uh, weekly devotion as a kind of touch point and a connection point to uh, help us uh, remember um, some of the important aspects of the Christian walk, even though we're not able to uh, gather together um, like we like we like to like we're we're used to doing um if you are familiar with grace and if you did if you have been worshiping with us you'll remember that this past week uh right before my sermon or maybe i think it was actually part of my sermon uh i said something along the lines of this was our 20th consecutive sunday um last week was last sunday just a few days ago was our 20th consecutive sunday of doing online worship and so we um we've been doing this online thing for a while now and and frankly i think we'll be doing it for a little while longer maybe we can look at a, a september uh, return to worship but uh, we'll just have to see how how that goes um you know obviously the reason that we're not being able to and many many other churches in the area in harris county area aren't uh, really choosing to worship uh uh, in person right now is because of that stupid old you know covid 19 virus uh, which has really made life in Texas, in, in Houston, and, and really in the United States, a lot different uh, than we're used to it being. And um, we have, let's see, today's July the 29th, and I think school is usually scheduled to start now. Of course, I know there's lots of IS, different ISDs in, in and around the Houston area, but school usually starts in about a month, in about three to four weeks. Um, but I know that HISD, at least, and I know several other ISDs, uh, around the the county are are pushing the start of school all the way back to September uh, um, after Labor Day trying to avoid you know big Labor Day gatherings um, and there's lots of different options with school coming up HISD is doing the first six weeks uh, online only I know that KDISD is doing I think the first three weeks online only several other independent school districts in the area are doing uh, a, a sort of hybrid you can choose to keep your child at home or you can choose to send your child to school um, it's just very very different and it also uh, brings up lots and lots of very um, very passionate reactions some people say oh we've got to send the kids back teachers have got to return to the classroom and then others on the other side of the poll are saying there's no way we can send the kids back to the classroom there's no way we can let the teachers and administrators back into the classrooms and back into the schools it's just inviting trouble and um i'm a big astros fan we're going to come back to covid 19 just a minute i'm a big astros fan and uh we had a huge um swelling of pride in 2017 when the astros won the world series and uh, against the, the the los angeles dodgers and they played the los angeles dodgers uh for the first time since the world series happened 2017 world series last night and it didn't go well for the astros and there was some some um uh, some bad blood between those two. So even even some um, you know benches clearing incidents happened, and uh, I've been on on Facebook a couple of times today during uh, in between projects, and I've got to teach myself not to to pay attention to comments in some of these national publications uh, that that um, talk about baseball. Of course, the Houston Astros and the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball game was featured in lots of these national publications, and. Uh, People get so very angry about uh, the Astros, and people get so very angry about the Dodgers, and uh, people get so very angry about COVID-19 and whether we should be going back to school or whether we should keep our kids at home. And, and we, we, we begin to say things we don't mean. Um, we, this is a common problem. We uh, often we will hide behind the keyboard and, and, and say things that are harmful and hurtful. So I want to read to you uh, some scripture. And again, I did this the past couple of weeks. That I know it's going to be backwards, but I'm reading from my special uh, Bible in 90 days. Uh, about three years ago, my church did. We read through the entire Bible in 90 days, and we did a sermon series. And this is a great Bible um, uh, to have with you because it's just super portable. You know, it's not really large. And so I like to do our devotionals from this Bible in 90 days 
uh, Bible. And so I'm going to be reading for you to you from the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Uh, for those of you who care to know such thing, uh, know such things, Matthew chapters five, six, and seven uh, are called the Sermon on the Mount. And a lot of the, the, the pithy sayings, the wise sayings, the wisdom sayings of Jesus' ministry come from Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, this, um, this Sermon on the Mount. Uh, you'll remember things like the Beatitudes and um, what Jesus says about salt and light. And so many other things come from Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. So we're going to be reading from the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, verse 38 through uh, 42. In my Bible, the subtitle is Eye for an Eye. So hear, hear now the word of God. It says, you have, heard it said that, you have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn, them the, uh, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, uh, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them Two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. And I said I was going to go through 42, but I'm actually going to read the next section too because it's really quite good as well. This is uh, this is going to be 43 through 48. It says, "You have heard that it was said, and this is something that Jesus said all the time. He said, "You have heard that it was said that such and such is so, but and then he'll often say, but I tell you the exact opposite of that is so. So we already heard, you have heard that it was said eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Now we hear it said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your God in heaven. God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are even not the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, are you doing, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as God is perfect. So these two um, little wisdom sayings, you have heard that it said an eye for an eye, and you have heard that it was said love your neighbor, can be a really good reminder of us, especially in this time of getting closer to uh, school. And it's not necessarily just uh, school, but really sort of lots of these things that surrounding COVID-19. Uh, there are lots and lots of different opinions, and people get really, really upset. But remember, and I'm not suggesting that people who disagree with you about COVID or really anything else are your enemies. But the way that we comment sometimes on Facebook and on Twitter and other, you know, Instagram and other um, social media uh, platforms, uh, we can we can sound like we're speaking to enemies. So I would remind you and and remind myself uh, that Jesus has told us. Uh, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Uh, I think, just thought it was a good word for us to remember um, because there are so many different opinions and so many different reactions to all that's going on around us. And really the important thing to remember is that people are doing the best that they, that they can, that the, the best that they know how. Uh, this is an unprecedented time in our, um, in our history. Uh, not, not often has the entire nation slash the entire world been shut down to quite the extent that we have been in the past few weeks and months. Uh, so I want, I want us all to remember that we really don't have enemies. Uh, Jesus tells us that we are to love those who persecute us. Uh, just a friendly reminder that Jesus tells us to do some really difficult things. <laughs> uh, won't you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this great church and we give you thanks for your word that lives among us. I ask God a special prayer for all those who watch this video that we might find uh, peace in times of turmoil, that we might find security in times of uncertainty. We ask this in the, one, uh, in the name of the one who has defeated death on our behalf, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good to see all of you guys. Bye-bye.